share some tips for shooting in complete darkness. Bring lights. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have light. Your camera's not going to see if you don't have lights. You know, and a lot of the different different cameras have different light sensitivity. There are some cameras today that are so sensitive and low light that you can almost shoot a lot of environments without even adding adding any lights to it. Now, you can add lights for enhancement, but when you're shooting in the dark, you have to add light. That's all there is to that. And it's usually that blue gel faking the moon or no? Well, that's you know, sometimes nighttime shots can be that. You can actually mix that. You can mix a little bit of the of a little bit of blue way back in the in, in the background. Let your subjects be just normal color temperature like we are. It kind of depends on, on what the director sees for that scene. Whatever he says it needs to be, that's what you create. Uh, but and for a dark scene, you, you have to have lights. There's just different kinds. And, and a lot of how much light depends on your camera. And what about those bright sunny days when the clouds come in and out, mm. which messes up the temperature of the light and mm. all that? Constantly adjusting. Constantly adjusting. There's been a lot of times where you will get cloud cover and you can, you, you can literally look up and see it coming. And you say, okay, here comes a cloud. Here comes a, we're going to have cloud cover for about 10 minutes here. So here it comes, okay, and here we go. And you shoot it all during that little segment. And you shoot until the sun comes out again and nails you with ugly, harsh lighting. And you, and you wait. And, and then again. Now, there are a lot of sets that have big silks that they'll put over top of a scene. Your backgrounds might be bright, but at least what you're shooting. That all depends on what kind of budget you have. Now, Bill, what are some dream projects you aspire to work on? What do you want to do down the road? I have uh, six uh, screenplays that are, are in place. Uh, two of them are completely written, four of them are in full treatment, uh, have a full treatment, uh, but two of them are, are ready to run. Well, best of luck to you, and come back on the show and tell us when you get these films going, okay? I will be glad to. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, thanks, Bill. <laughs> and we'll have Bill's contact information at the end of the program. Coming up next, still photographer Lisa Benson, and we'll find out how her job differs from Bill's. Below the Line returns right after this. My next guest must almost be invisible on the set as she photographs actors in action during a scene. She also captures great behind the scenes moments and is here to explain how her creative eye finds the right time to snap a picture. Please welcome photographer Lisa Benson. Hi Lisa, welcome. How are you today? I'm good, how are you doing? You've been shooting all sorts of stuff. We're going to get into that. I have been, I have been, I've been busy. How did you start this whole photography thing? What was it that got you into it? Well, I'd, I've been kind of messing with photography for a while. And um, I uh, was in a sales job a long time ago, and my husband gave me a little camera, and I started traveling the mountains and started shooting. And, and people were looking at the pictures going, those are pretty good, you know? And um, of course, I didn't really think they were, but um, a friend of mine asked me to go to an event, and when I went to this event with her, she wouldn't let me repay her for the ticket. And I went to a place that she really likes and took a picture of something that she likes and, and framed it and gave it to her, and she just told me how awesome it was. She couldn't believe it. She said it looked like a postcard. So that kind of got me started that maybe I did have a, you know, a certain eye for the photography. So then it became a huge passion of mine. So it started off as a hobby, mm -hmm. looking around. Right. And then you were looking into this as something that could be more serious. Right. And how did you transition from fun photos to the concerts? Then you got into shooting entertainment mm -hmm. projects, mm -hmm. TV, music videos, <coughs> mm -hmm. feature films. Mm -hmm. When did you realize that this hobby can turn into a career? Well, it's, it's really funny. Um, it seems like the more people I ask, um, I had to get out and network and, and, and start talking to people. And the more people I asked, the more people said, yeah, I'll let you come in and shoot. And then all of a sudden, um, I kept, I just kept running into people that were in the entertainment world. And it just kind of, the door just kind of opened for me. And um, I did a lot of concerts and, and like you said, the TVs and the films. So it just kind of happened by accident. What is it like shooting films or TV shows? Um, films especially are very long days. You know, you spend a lot of time there. And, you know, um, I have to jump in there and shoot 
when we're taking the, um, not the actual filming. Um, there are things that you can put on cameras to keep them from making the noise where you can shoot while they're filming, but normally I do all mine behind the scenes or I do it when they're taking a, like a, a rehearsal take, if you will. Um, that's when I try to shoot and, you know, I run in there when they do cut, I run in and start shooting the, the actors or the actresses, you know, on set and, and get people um, actually just talking to each other when, it, when the camera's not rolling. So um, a lot of behind the scenes stuff when the film's going on. So you're at work shooting mm -hmm. and shooting mm -hmm. and shooting and shooting how many pictures do you shoot in a given oh day my gosh if it's on a if it's on a film set i mean i shoot hundreds and hundreds it it might be if it if it's a, a 10 or 12 hour film day i might shoot 900 pictures wow i know but it's it's kind of like it's such a passion of mine that um i'm always wanting to capture everything you know and it's like Every time I put my camera down going, okay, I've got enough of this guy. I don't need to shoot anymore. And every time I put my camera down, I'll go, oh my gosh, I wish I'd gotten that shot. So I just keep shooting. And, and I'm always looking for that better shot every time. So um, I'm just so absorbed with it. You know, once I bring that camera out, I just go into another world. So it's just a passion. And with digital photography, I guess mm -hmm. it's easier to take these many pictures. Right. Versus a film camera, we have to always change roles or right. having to have two or three cameras right. always there ready. Right. So digital photography really is the future. It's been happening right. for years now. And what is the advantage of having all of that well, to work with? With me, though, I never really messed with film. I've been totally in the digital world. And um, what's really cool about it is you just delete things that aren't any good. So if I'm um, not just necessarily on the films and TV sets, but if I'm if I'm shooting headshots for you um, or whatever, I want you to be relaxed. And if it's a shot that doesn't turn out, we just bloop, delete it and it's gone. You know, so I don't have to go and process all these rolls of film. So it's a whole lot easier to just go through. But then I do all the processing myself, though. You know, um, dig digitally, if I can say that right, on the computer. So it is, you know probably takes more time than the film did. I'm not really sure, so. But, but it's cost effective because you're I'm not sure. developing pictures that right. are gonna go in the trash. Yeah, that's true. You're not, you're not. But you are spending your time on the computer. But it's exciting to me to, to, to shoot and to go home and, and stick that little card in the computer and see what I've shot all day. Because it's one thing to see it on the back of your camera, and then it's another thing to see it on your, on your computer screen and not have to wait for the processing of the film, you know. So that, that's real exciting for me. Very good. And we'll have more with Lisa Benson coming up right after this, where she explains the costs involved in getting all this ready to go shoot on the set. Stay with us. We're back with entertainment still photographer Lisa Benson. Lisa, what is the cost involved to get going in this as a business and the upkeep? Okay. Um, the sky's kind of the limit. There's all different price ranges of cameras. Um, you need to make sure that you can't just use just a standard little point and shoot camera. You've got to have uh, what's considered an SLR camera where you can take the lenses off and be able to adapt lenses um, for whatever, you know, situation that you're shooting in. And you have so, one here, right? Uh, yeah, I do have one here. And um, what I mean by the SLR is um, is where you can take that off and put on oh, okay. whatever different kind. There's all kinds of of lenses as well as the camera bodies, but um, I would say that you probably can start in like the $500 range um, to get you a fairly decent um, body of the camera. What does that come with? Um, it usually comes with just a, a regular, what they call pretty much a generic lens that can be used, but most of it can only be used outside unless you're under lights. So, you know, if you're in low light situations, you have to have lenses that, that will adapt for low lights and, and there's just all kinds of different wide angle lenses and um, there's so, you know, depending on how many lenses you want to get, you can really spend a fortune. That's really where your money will run is in your lenses. Ballpark, what can that run? Um, lenses, well, you know, you can get by with a, uh, the camera and the lens that comes with it and then a couple of more lenses. It'll probably run you up in, I would say, 1500 maybe $2,000 range. And that's also including, you know, maybe camera bags and and all your digital cards that have to go in it, and then you have to have the flashes and everything else. And I mean, there's just unbelievable amount of things that can go with the camera. 